Hi my friend, I'm Dan Hammer and this video series is about how you can naturally prevent Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease. In your skull is a three pound wonder that has 100 billion neurons sending each other electrical and chemical signals in an orchestrated pattern that creates memories and allows for learning. At about the age of 30, our brains begin to shrink by about a half a percent per year. We usually don't notice this change for years, but over time this shrinkage, combined with other factors, begins to weaken the signals inside our brain. This leads to memory loss, which is normal for most people as they age. What is not normal is for this orchestrated electrical and chemical signaling pattern to become so dysfunctional that it leads to dementia diseases like Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a progressive brain disorder and is the most common form of dementia. More and more research is showing that there is a direct connection between Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease. So let's look at this from a broad picture and then we'll get more specific. As I stated earlier, it's estimated that your brain has 100 billion nerve cells or neurons. Each nerve cell communicates with many other neurons to form networks. These networks of neurons have special jobs. Some help us see, hear, smell, move and breathe. Other networks are involved in thinking, learning and remembering. Every network of neurons is like a tiny factory that needs resources, generates energy, performs a function and eliminates waste. To keep everything running in a coordinated operation requires large amounts of nutrients and oxygen. Of these four basic components, resources, energy, function, and waste, your cardiovascular system is critical to three of the four components. It is your cardiovascular system that will deliver the needed resources for brain function. Those resources, like oxygen and glucose, are going to provide the energy your brain needs to function. And the waste products created by your brain must be carried away by the circulatory system. If your circulation is compromised, then you will compromise brain function. They go hand in hand. It's also important to note that with the need for a large amount of oxygen, there is a tremendous potential for the production of free radicals. Free radicals are not the hippies from the 60s with peace signs on their Berkeley t-shirts. Free radicals are a byproduct of aerobic respiration, energy production when oxygen is present. These free radicals are very unstable molecules and will steal electrons from other molecules to stabilize themselves. Without a good supply of antioxidants, these free radicals will steal the electrons from living tissue, which over time can damage the tissue resulting in cell mutation, dysfunction, and or death. Antioxidants are molecules that freely give away their outer electrons and the neat thing about this process is that they are able to remain stable molecules. If a person's diet is lacking in antioxidants then the protective role they play in preventing free radical damage is compromised. Vegetables, especially deeply colored vegetables, contain high concentrations of powerful antioxidants and have been shown to substantially reduce the potential for any type of dementia. Although there is no known cure for Alzheimer's disease, there is a growing body of work showing that you can take steps to prevent this disease. While we don't have the time to look at all the information, let me point out several key pieces. Let's start with folate or vitamin B9. Vitamin B9 is also called folic acid and is essential for the creation of new cells in the body. Most people, especially women, associate folic acid with pregnancy to help ensure that the developing child will not experience certain brain and spinal cord defects. Right there is a huge clue. If folic acid is important for brain and nervous system development for an infant, why do we not recognize it as an important nutrient needed to continue to help the brain and nervous system operate properly as we age? 
Recent research is showing that a lack of folate, vitamin B9, may triple the risk of developing dementia in elderly people. Researchers in South Korea recently published their work in the British Medical Association's Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Psychiatry. After taking into account age, disability, alcohol consumption, and weight change, these researchers concluded the onset of dementia was significantly associated with the exaggerated decline in folate. In a separate study published in The Lancet, people over 50 who took a daily dose of 800 micrograms of folic acid showed an improvement in short-term memory, mental agility, and verbal fluency. Currently, the United States recommends a daily dose of 400 micrograms of folic acid. Unfortunately, most people do not obtain the current U.S. recommendation of folic acid from their diet. To help highlight this powerful need for folic acid, I'd like to present the work of Dr. David Snowden from the University of Minnesota. In 1986, Dr. Snowden began his study with a group of nuns called the School Sisters of Notre Dame. This has now become a landmark study commonly referred to as the Nun Study. One of the interesting findings was that nuns with high folic acid levels manifested hardly any Alzheimer's disease damage to their brains in their autopsies. Dr. Snowden's explanation centers on folic acid acting as a check against the amino acid homocysteine, which has been implicated in cardiovascular disease. Higher levels of folate in the blood seems to offer protection against stroke and might even protect brain cells from damage. Our next preventative nutrient is omega-3 fatty acids. In the world of fat, there are good and bad fats. Omega-3 fatty acids belong in the good fat category. A recent study conducted by Rush University Medical Center in Chicago followed more than 3,000 men and women for six years. The researchers wanted to see how diet affected memory. Their study showed that people who ate fish at least once a week had a 10% slower decline in memory when compared to those who didn't eat fish. Some improvement, but it gets even better with the Framingham Heart Study. This famous and long-standing study showed that people who consumed the highest levels of omega-3 fatty acids had a 40 to 50% lower risk of developing Alzheimer's or any other type of dementia disease. Omega-3 fatty acids can be found in wild, fresh, and canned salmon, herring, sardines, anchovies, rainbow trout, uh, Pacific oysters, eggs fortified with omega-3, flaxseed, walnuts, walnut oil, canola oil, and soybeans. Our next nutrient is beta-carotene, which is water-soluble and the precursor to vitamin A. It's considered a powerful antioxidant to help prevent free radical damage. According to the lead researcher, Francine Grodstein of Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, beta-carotene is an antioxidant vitamin. So the reason we thought it might help your brain is because there is now a lot of evidence that oxidative damage harms your brain. And that may be one of the initiating factors which leads to memory problems. In the findings of her 18-year-old study were published in the Archives of Internal Medicine. There were two groups of men. The long-term group consisted of 4,052 men who randomly were assigned to take either 50 milligrams of beta-carotene or a placebo every other day for an average of 18 years. The short-term group of 1,904 men were randomly assigned to take either the same amount of beta-carotene or a placebo every other day for an average of one year. While the short-term group showed no significant difference in cognitive tests between those who took the placebo and those who received beta-carotene, there was a marked difference in the long-term group. 
Men in the long-term group who received the beta carotene recorded significantly higher scores in several cognitive and verbal memory tests when compared to those on the placebo. So far, we've seen how folic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, and beta carotene have scientific studies supporting their ability to prevent dementia, especially Alzheimer's disease. In our next video, we're going to examine how iron, the Mediterranean diet, cholesterol, diabetes, and aerobic exercise all affect cognitive function. If you have any questions about this information or need to contact me, then please either email me or call me directly. My contact information is listed on the screen. Or contact the person who turned you on to this video series. We're part of a team whose mission is to save a million lives. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video as I continue this discussion on how you can use natural methods to improve your cardiovascular system and reduce your potential risk for Alzheimer's disease. I'll also introduce you to a key organ that must be properly repaired and nourished if you want to significantly reduce your risk factors for cognitive and cardiovascular disease.